All right, Paul, we have our two gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, which even when we take out the Sun, make up still the majority of what's left. If we get really specific, we can add the ice giants, Uranus and Neptune, and then there's the other stuff. So, you know, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, the inner planets, they feel special, right? They, you, they, they seem so inconsequential here. Yes, so what's left is mostly in the inner solar system. So remember, um, here are all the different things orbiting. Yep. And remember that Venus, Mercury, Mercury, Earth, Mars are very close in compared right. to this huge, great empty space with the much bigger planets further out. So now we're talking about the, the fluff in the middle. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of these rocky fluff, if you like. Um, we think about it as being four rocky planets, but in fact, you've probably got to include lots of moons and asteroids as well, because they're also rocky things of actually very similar sizes. So, wait, 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 wait. so you're saying that kind of these things are the same as some of the asteroids and moons, just because they're rocky? Yeah, so I don't think there's any clear divide between a large asteroid and a small rocky planet. They're all just lumps of rock that go around the sun. And we call the big lumps of rock that go around the sun planets, and we call the small lumps of rock that go around the sun asteroids. I'm, I'm getting they're all just lumps of rock going around the sun. I'm getting a real anti-Earth vibe here, Paul. Um, so, well, so is there anything that makes the rocky planets different than the rocky moons and asteroids? Not a lot. I mean, there's a size effect. Okay. So here we look at all the planets again, um, and so you can see that the rocky things are pretty tidy compared to even the ice giants, which themselves are pretty tidy compared to Jupiter and Saturn, <laughs> which <is laughs> themselves are tidy compared to the Sun. Um, now, the biggest of the rocky things, we live on it. It's the yes. Earth. So who says I'm anti-Earth? We are the biggest of the small rocky fluff near the middle. <laughs> And it's like saying I'm the first loser, you know, you don't necessarily get the award. And that's well, not even your know, fifth loser or something. Fifth loser. <laughs> um, so, and when you look at Earth from space, we see clouds, as yes. you saw in Jupiter and Earth, uh, Jupiter on gas giants and ice giants. But if you look at it from the side, you see that this gas is a yes. very thin layer. The entire ocean and atmosphere and biosphere of the Earth is about the thickness of a postage stamp on a soccer ball. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I, I think that's what people fail to realize is we think, oh, we're such a big, watery, atmospheric planet. It actually makes up just a tiny fraction of everything that's there. Yeah. So it's a really small fraction of a really small planet. So we've got 6,400 kilometers of rock and then about you know, 10 kilometers of air and then nothing. So and that's it. It's very, very thin on, on the surface. Um, and the biggest rocky things do tend to have these thin atmospheres. Okay. So Venus also has an atmosphere. And is the atmosphere less or more than Earth? It's thicker than the Earth, but it's still uh, tiny okay. compared to the rock in the middle. Okay. Uh, the few spacecraft that actually survived landing on the hellish surface of Venus, which we'll talk about later, it's lumps of rocks. Yeah. So again, it's about 6,000 kilometers of rock with a few kilometers of, atmosphere. in the case, mostly carbon dioxide orbiting around the outside with sulfuric acid clouds. So the biggest of the rocky things, which are still not very big compared to everything we talked about so far, do have thin atmospheres, but they're almost irrelevant in terms of the total mass. What about Mars? Mars, we're now talking you know, only 4,000 kilometers, it's getting a bit smaller, 3,000 okay. kilometers. And it does have an atmosphere, but its atmosphere is very tenuous. Okay, so we're, we're, we're getting smaller and we're getting less atmosphere. More rocky and less airy. Okay. Um, then time we get down to, to uh, Mercury, it's got no significant atmosphere um, and it looks covered in craters and rocks. I mean, you pretty much couldn't distinguish with the close-up picture uh, between the Moon and Mercury, to be honest. Yes, Mercury is a little bit larger, but the Moon also looks very similar. It's rock, virtually no atmosphere, if you covered zoom in, in craters. Yeah. Of course, you can zoom a bit closer if you actually land on the Moon, which you haven't done on, <laughs> on Mercury. people on Mercury. Um, and generally speaking, once you're much smaller, Mars is kind of the borderline between having a little atmosphere and having nothing. Everything okay. smaller than Mars, by and large, has, no atmosphere. Okay. The gravity is just not intense enough to actually trap the air and keep okay. it there. And then you get smaller things still. Um, this, this is, is Ceres, Ceres, which is the largest of the asteroids. And it'd be hard to tell the difference between this and Mercury, really. It's a bit smaller. Well, don't people sometimes call this a dwarf planet as well? Yeah, it's a lump of rock that goes around the sun. <laughs> or there are big lumps of rock and small lumps of rock. This is a bit smaller than and Mercury. And it doesn't have an atmosphere? It doesn't have an atmosphere. Okay. Now, when you start getting much smaller, and this is about the thousand kilometer Okay. Diameter. When you get to the smaller ones, like uh, Vesta, another asteroid, next biggest asteroid, it's 
not as smooth and as round as we've been seeing. Yes, by the time you're not looking at the smaller rocks, the bigger rocks have enough gravity to, first of all, trap an atmosphere if they're as big as Earth. Yep. By the time you're at Mercury or the Moon, or you know, you've got enough gravity still to shrink everything down to be a nice sphere. Okay. We'll talk more about this later. Yep. But no atmosphere. When you start getting really small, they're no longer spheres. There's not enough you gravity to squash it, it into yeah. a sphere. And they start being irregular. And when you get down to the really small asteroids, like these ones, yeah. then you start to get very irregular. People talk about them being peanut shaped. They've still got no atmosphere. They're still covered in craters. They're still rather gray. They're um, just, they're lumps of rock. Yes. And they're irregular lumps of rock. And there are tens of millions of these lumps of rock out there. But actually, um, in the asteroid belt, uh, Ceres weighs about as much as everything else put together. Okay, so Ceres is still the the biggest one in the asteroid belt. By a long way. By a long way. But even if you add Ceres and all the other asteroids, they wouldn't add up to like Mars, not okay. even close. Tiny fraction, you know, like a percent or so of Mars. So there's a lot of small stuff out there, but it doesn't add up to very much. Okay, but they, they're so small that they can't generally pull themselves into nice balls. And even those ones that can pull themselves into balls are big enough to pull and hold onto an atmosphere. So they're just... But it's still a very thin atmosphere compared to the ice giants or the gas giants, which are most, well, gas giants are mostly yeah. atmosphere. The ice giants have significant parts of atmosphere, but, you know, Earth and Venus, it's far, far, far less than a percent. Okay. 